Alright, we got back from the junkyard and I'm getting ready to remove this wiper motor. Uh, before we do, I want to show you the electrical, professional electrical job that the uh, original owner did. This white wire here is actually going to the electric choke on the carburetor and he's got it spliced into the wiper uh, motor window washer. I don't know because I guess that's a keyed switch and the only time you want that to come on is on a keyed switch so oh. who knows so we'll check that out um, I did go ahead and get a wire harness at the junkyard uh, headlight complete headlight harness uh, I wanted to get a complete tail light harness which is this plug right here but the problem we had with it is the car the truck was literally down on the ground I couldn't get up under there to get it Okay, this had a turbo 400 in it. Uh, what we're doing is, this is a three-quarter ton Chevy truck. Now, it says it was an 83, but it doesn't look like an 83. It looks more like a 70s. And if we look right here, look at that. Tilt, ooh, fancy. See that? So we're getting this tilt steering out of this because I'm putting it in my truck, see? That's what we're doing here. Um, now, we are down here at, what town is this called? Fayette. We're down to Fayette, Utah, and uh, look, searching for parts for our truck. Let me get this out, and then we'll go from there. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, I don't Wyatt, think I need it. Wyatt said there's two different ones of these. I can't remember what he said. It's called a rag joint, dude. <clears throat> Let me look at it. I guess I can take it off. I mean, if I need a rag joint, I'm going to buy a new one. That's rotted. Yeah, we'll just get the new one if I need one. Want to go look at this? Yeah. I think that's the one you wanted. 92? I think so. All right, so we got the steering column out. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get a late model steering column. Let's go ahead and check that out and see what we got. So, so now you're going to get another steering column? Oh, I meant steering wheel. We're going to get a steering wheel. Oh, I was like, what? Yeah, that steering wheel's too old, dude. It's, that's what I want. I want a steering wheel like that, but the problem we have is it's too old and that thing will rot in my hands. Look at it's all cracked and we're gonna have to pass on that one bro I'll have to get one somewhere else 95 where's the 90 oh we'll look at that one and see what that one's got all right so we're gonna go look at this other truck over here and see if it's got a steering column in it with a steering wheel I'm sorry and if this steering wheel works out we might be able to use it but I really want one like the one we just looked at and the reason I want to go with that is because it's actually a smaller diameter it's a 15 inch wheel instead of a 20 inch or 19. This is called a collapsible steering column. If you get in a wreck, the steering column collapses before it hits you in the chest. So this steering wheel won't work either. Uh, this is a later model truck and it's got airbags in it and we don't want it. So we're probably gonna have to go with an aftermarket steering wheel. Yeah, this steering column will work. This is it. This is the situation right here, guys. Well, we came out here to the junkyard with Justin and uh, we're looking for a wiper motor. So we found a wiper motor in this truck. I'll pull up on that hood over there. I think we can get this open. I think it's just the hinge. The, pull that up like that. Right. Oh, it's 
not even bolted on. So this wiper motor here won't work. Okay, this wiper motor won't work. See, that's a different wiper motor than what we got over there. Here, here's one just like mine. Let's go look at that one, Justin. All right, this truck right here is like mine. You can tell by the lights. Let's look at the wiper motor on this one. If we look at this wiper motor here that I'm looking at with my finger, we see that it's broke. This one's no good, Justin. We can't use it. Well, it's got a... Well, it had a harness until we found broken wires. Part of the harness, it's rotted. That's not going to work. I don't think we're going to be able to get a harness out here. We're going to probably have to buy new harnesses. Well, uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't get a junkyard harness. Okay. You're so you're going to go ahead. Uh, you're, the banker says go ahead and buy brand well, new wire because harness. You heard be, her. Okay, gonna, that's all I needed to know. You're going to be throwing okay. away. You're well, going to be throwing away. That's all I needed money. to know. That's all I needed to know. Well, so six we bought that you didn't use. Okay, we're not going to buy. No, we're not going to buy junkyard wire harness. Wire harness. We're going to get new ones. The, the wire harness yeah, would be the same like thing. Nine or something. What are we looking at over here, guy? Not much. Exactly. You know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at Bondo. That Bondo. That's Bondo and paint. Look, and they just pop it out. That's spray on Bondo, dude. Is it? Yes. So here's a wire harness. What are you thinking, Minnie? I think it's usable. You do? No. I was joking, Justin. If Minnie says I can spend money on brand new wire harnesses, you're damn right. My friend Pete's getting brand new wire harnesses. If but what about my Etzel? That's what I'm asking. What about that? See the, 58, out my ears. the 58 Edsel. Smoke coming out my nose. Well, we need to talk about that. Ooh. We need to talk about that Edsel. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. Not unless you want to be divorced. It's a 58. It's beautiful shape. Beautiful. Now, here's a late model Chevy that's got a steering wheel in it. Let's see if that steering wheel's any good. The problem you have with these old steering wheels like this is they're so old they start to tear. Yeah, that's all deteriorated. That's not even worth looking at, but. Okay, people, my camera's getting hot, and uh, we'll see you when we see you next. Camera girl Minnie is not being a good camera person today. That's a shame. Um, she's not doing her job like she's supposed to, and just wandering around like a, a ditzy blonde for some odd reason. Hey. Well? This is the main wire harness that, and you can see where he spliced this in, and where this green wire goes is actually over here to the distributor, because he put an HEI distributor in it. Now this is what's really got me confused. If we look at this right here, this is a relay. I don't understand why he's got a relay wired in to the system, and this white wire is actually uh, the wire that comes from that, it goes down here to this, and then you got the, one of these black wires comes over, these two black wires go to this right here. So he's instead of just running a hot wire to that like you should do and then having a ground wire, that's all you need. Um, and then this red wire that you're looking at right here is actually spliced into all this green wire action that goes to the distributor and he doesn't need that either. All he's got to do is take the coil wire and uh, put that on the uh, distributor to make everything work. We're going to try to fix what we got here to save us money. Uh, like I said, I did get this wire harness here, but I don't think I'm going to need it. I think, all the, I think all the shortages on the lights are in the back of the truck, and that's why I wanted to get the wire harness that went from here to the back. They want $260 for the back tail light harness. Uh, so when I go to the junkyard next week, I'm going to see if I can find another wire harness, a back tail light harness. Uh, we're going to a car show next week, and we're going to drop our car off, and then I'm going to the junkyard. 
because I forgot to get this latch right here. This hood latch is messed up. It doesn't latch right. You gotta slam the hood super hard. And uh, I meant to get one when I was at the junkyard, but I forgot to uh, because I was more concerned about getting this wiper motor that he's got rigged up here. Now come over here. To get this off, you got to uh, look inside there. Do you see those bolts in there? Yeah, there, oh, you there you go. Okay, so those little bolts have got to come off. So we're going to go ahead and remove that bolt straight out. And then I want to show everybody this. This is actually copper coated. That's a grounding uh, mechanism. So it will not create friction when the ball is actually uh, inside the wiper arm moving back and forth. I'm thinking that replacing this wiper is not going to fix the issue of the park problem. It might, we don't know. Well, we're back on our 74 Chevy truck, and what you're looking at here is I'm going to paint the top of the header panel and the radiator. Now, I found out that this radiator is not a factory radiator. This is a radiator that uh, somebody put in there. We also found out, I don't know if I mentioned this, that is not the original engine. This is an original 350 Chevrolet car, truck. Uh, not a 454 big block truck, so the numbers don't match as far as being factory original. Um, I don't even know if the transmission is original. Um, I'm pretty sure that the transmission was a turbo 350 as well. I did find receipts on it that said that the transmission was rebuilt two years ago. And uh, we were inspecting the engine and we came to the conclusion that some work has been done to this engine but I mean you can basically see that it's got the Elderbrock high rise Elderbrock carburetor all the uh, uh, valve covers and other aftermarket stuff but um, I'm not going to paint this car I'm not going to paint the truck I'm not going to replace the trim on the sides I'm going to leave the trim to match the outside of the truck and that's how it's going to be I'm going to wax it um, I've already waxed some down here, and then I will probably wax it. I don't know if I want to buff it, because if I buff it, being a single stage paint will probably burn the paint off, and I don't want to do that. So I'll hand wax it. Um, I went ahead and replaced the rubber bumpers on the tailgate. Let me go ahead and show you that. So I got upper and lower rubber bumpers for both sides and it really helps out to replace those as far as rattling goes. Another thing I'm gonna do is I will paint the fenders inside. I'm gonna leave the firewall like it is. And I ordered a wire harness. Let's go ahead and talk about that. I ordered a 454 Big Block HEI wire harness from Eckler's. Well, that said in stock, that's what it said. Well, it's not in stock. So I went ahead and paid the $400 for the wire harness, the engine wire harness, and they never got a hold of me, they never contacted me. Well, at the same time, I ordered the rear harness for the uh, rear lights, I ordered the intermediate harness, and then I ordered the tail light harness in the back. Well, I got the intermediate harness and I found out who makes the wire harnesses for Eckler's called m &H Electronic Fabrication or electrical fabrication. So I contacted them and they said, we don't even have any of those and won't have any for four to six weeks. That they're in production right now, but we don't have any available. And they looked up the situation and they found out that I ordered it. They had my name and uh, Southwest Rod and Custom. And they said, well, give us a call back in three or four weeks and we'll see if we got it and we'll ship it to you. Don't ever order anything from Eckler's. Eckler's sucks. I'm going to tell you that right now. Watch the detailed videos of how they treated me and what kind of service they give you uh, when you order the parts from them when they don't even have them in stock. And 
I'm in the process of restoring the front of the vehicle, and you can see right here, I went ahead and restored my grill. Um, this is the original grill. I took the 350 emblem out and I put a 454 brand new emblem, and I also replaced the bow tie, um, yeah, foil, brand new. I got brand new uh, hardware here to install the grill. And when I painted this grill, I didn't just paint it with one color. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you want to restore a grill on a Chevy truck, it takes two colors to actually restore it to make it look original. First, you got to get pewter gray, which is a very, very light gray. And then you spray that and you cover the whole thing really good after you clean it up. You get it to where it's supposed to be. And, and in a likable situation, let's go ahead and look at the back. You can see there's the pewter gray color. You can see how it's lighter right here. And then what I did, I took some silver metallic. I did not take aluminum. Do not use aluminum. Make sure it's silver spray paint. Do not use aluminum. Aluminum is super bright and it will look like shit. You have to get the silver. When you get the silver, what you do is you kind of just mist it on there just like this. That's all you want to do. All right, and you do that two times. You go around, you're gonna hold your can up here and you're gonna make sure that it covers evenly and then what you have the next day, cause you gotta let it dry overnight of course, you're gonna have a factory original uh, style restored grill just like you see right here. And if you look right here, here's the two colors that I use to restore the grill. Um, I use gloss, pewter, gray right here and I like to use this spray paint that says paint and primer and then after I put that on I took this uh, silver metallic right here metallic silver and I painted that on there now another thing that I did to restore the front end of my car is I went ahead and polished out the headlight um, range you can see that this is all original chrome from 1974 I used my green magic polish it came out really nice it's not like brand new chrome or anything but then after that uh, I went ahead and sanded down the inserts uh, where black paint's supposed to go and then I taped it all off and I painted the black like it's supposed to be around the headlights and then what we got in the box here we got brand new marker lights and uh, lenses uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace all the marker lights all the lenses uh, I put two brand new headlights in the vehicle. We'll go ahead and lift the paper up. I'm going to show you what it looks like right here. I went ahead and cleaned all this up and detailed behind the grill. And yeah, it's really looking nice. Now I've already waxed this down here. I'm going to probably have to go over the wax one more time, um, being an old paint job that it is. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and paint the top of the header. One more thing I did, I went ahead and painted the back side of the hood with black pour 15. I did not use spray paint, I did not use Rust-Oleum. This is pour 15, so it will kill the rust on the hood and it will um, never rust again. If we look right here on the table, we got all the brake stuff for the front brakes. We got the rotors, we got the pads, we got brand new brake hoses, inner and outer wheel bearings and seals and then I went ahead and bought shocks rear front and rear shocks as well and I went with these gas grande fleet truck shocks because those are the heaviest duty ones that you can get at the best price uh, these shocks were $75 each if I would have went to Grand Junction and bought them at the Napa store there they were $68 so um, I went ahead and opted out and bought all this stuff at the Napa Auto Parts here because I added up the gas and the time that it would take to go to Napa in Grand Junction and it would have cost me more money and time to do that than just buy the stuff here whereas in Grand Junction they don't even they wouldn't even sell me the wheel bearings uh, they said I had to buy the whole hub with uh, bearings installed so I went ahead and scotch brighted this down using a red scotch bright then I cleaned it off with uh, carburetor cleaner. I went ahead and used carburetor cleaner to clean that off. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a spray can paint right here. This is in, indoor, outdoor, um, same situation. It's got the primer and the paint in it. 
and this is the black gloss. The reason I'm going with black gloss because eventually it'll turn to semi gloss. And if I use semi gloss, then it'll turn to chalky black like it is now. And I want it to be a semi gloss paint job. Another thing when you use a spray can to paint with, you should shake it up vigorously, not just for one or two minutes. And then before you spray it, you should always spray it out in the air to make sure that you get a full flow spray. So the first coat we put on, we're just going to kind of like blend it in, just like this. So we're going to put one more coat on this and then I think we're done. And then we'll let this dry for about, I don't know, probably 45 minutes to an hour with the hood open. And that's it, looky there. So we're going to go ahead and take all the paper off and uh, look, take a gander at it. And you can see how nice it looks. <clears throat> when I put the grill on, it's going to look really, really nice behind there. Like I said, we're not restoring this car to be a $100 million operation. We're restoring this car as a driver, and we're going to make it to our liking. When you restore trucks or cars, completely restore them and put brand new paint jobs on them and all this other shit. Let me show you. I want to show you what happens to them. This is what happens to the cars if you restore them 199%. They sit in your garage with a car cover on it. You hardly ever drive it. You don't want to take the car cover off. You don't want to take the car out and go around the block. You don't want to get it dirty. You don't want to do anything. So when you treat your car and restore it to OEM factory original, this is what happens. When you spend hundreds and thousands of dollars doing it, this is it. We look at a Volkswagen covered up with a paint tarp. So speaking of restoration, you can see why I'm gonna replace the old lens. Look how nasty those are. Um, just total trash. And hopefully when I open up the lens itself, the brand new lens, it'll have new gaskets. If not, we'll clean those thoroughly. And then if you look at the front grill, you can see I replaced the headlights. So. I'm going to go ahead and put this all together, and do you see how detailed that looks? Look how nice this looks. Hang on. Just from putting a little bit of effort and putting some tape and paper on it, and it looks really, really nice, like brand new. Okay. What we're doing is we are replacing wire harnesses. Uh, this is called the intermediate harness that I'm taking out now. And we're going to show you that when I get it all out of here. You aren't going to believe what kind of shape this thing's in and what the previous owner did to it. Basically, it's a clusterfuck and he jacked it up beyond repair. So I'm going to show you that. But uh, before we do that, we got to run the new wire harness down through the car. So I was always told before you take your wire harness out of the vehicle, you should lay it lay the new one next to uh, the old one and then that way we know that it's going to be running the proper way so here's our old our new harness right here and we're gonna put this through here like this this just happens to be our old harness right here they got it so fucked up that fucked up isn't even a fucking word over here. Can you see this mess? I don't even know if you can see this. This is... I gotta go get my wire cutters. I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this. And I want to show you this mess. This is, this is ridiculous. This wire harness that I'm putting in was $150 for this intermediate wire harness. And it's atrocious. It's unbelievable. They got wires hooked onto wires. Look at that. Look at this mess we're talking about here. This is ridiculous. And then, of course, this wire harness that you're looking at that's all cluster fucked, uh, that was 280 bucks. 
and we got to replace that one too so let's go ahead and finish this one out and then we'll get to that one there's what's left of the intermediate harness um, look at it yeah sure thing buddy sure thing and here is our left tail lamp assembly so we're gonna go ahead and undo this ground wire. and you can see how many wires they got on it look at this unbelievable look at that and you can see where they spliced and those wires not just with butt connectors but also with tape they went ahead and wired it up with tape Wow and then here's the real deal look at this so this is a red lens this isn't a clear lens this is a red and it's not just red it's worn out and rotted and the guy puts a yellow bulb in a red lens now how can you see that in the daytime when somebody hits the brakes so the right side of the harness looks a lot better shape than the left side but uh, still it's not in the best shape now here's another deal on the right side he had the deluxe tail light which is worn out I mean look at it it's just shitty and then on the left side he had the standard so here's our wire harness and this one here I don't think it was the cheapest one but it was basically the only one we could find and it's made by American Auto Wire uh, and this is specifically made for this truck this is a dedicated OEM style factory wire harness that's already wired up and ready to go and we're going to look at that it's got all the connections this would be our uh, left side and then of course this would come over here to be our right side and then we got our wire right here for our license plate light so this should be an easy hookup to put back in there and it actually looks like it's in really nice condition so instead of unplugging those I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them off um, just like that all right so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and I see we got some jerry rig operation going on right here uh, we got wires actually taped and wired all around this fucking shit unbelievable look how they got this going look at this right here do you believe this look at this this is just a real mess I'm not even gonna guess what they did to wire this up or make it even try to work because this is just an abominable mess is what this is and that should come through there it's not there's our new harness right here put that up there so we don't roll over it and break it and then we're going to come over here i got to get this off right here this is bullshit total bullshit people total total this is just unbelievable now I was going to buy a wire harness damn it Got it in my fucking mouth. Jeez. But uh, what I was saying is, uh, I was gonna buy a wire harness and wire the whole car up, and I thought, well, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that, and I would rather just do it this way. See that groove in the concrete? Right there. I was on my roll around chair up in the front and I went like this, you know, backing up on it. And the wheel got caught in there and I fell back and smacked my head on the ground. And yeah, that hurts right there. Boy, it feels, it's a bruise. It went all the way up into my shoulder. You should feel sorry for me. Yeah, I know. 
Alright, so what we just got done doing. What I'm sorry for is I didn't catch it on the film. Thanks. Look at this wire harness. This is called an intermediate wire harness. Can you see that? I guess. I can barely see, so yeah. It's really bright out here. This is what's left of the back wire harness. Look how they wired this in. Uh, what's going on with this? Why did they wrap this around the frame and left all this? Look at this. This is unbelievable. So, they had electric brakes hooked up to this truck. Okay, which they didn't work. Do you see what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah. Don't and, step on that phone. I know. I've, I've actually done that before. It's not fun. And then, on top of that, they wired in a five-way plug down there with this mess. Would you be able to read that map on that wiring? Not really. I'm out here working in the sun, okay? Look, do you see the sun up there? Yeah, because I can't yeah. see already. That's because you're, that's because you're hibernating in the house. On. I'm working. I'm cleaning. Okay. I'm getting things ready so I can leave All right. next week. Okay, we'll see you later. Right. I got work to do. Thank you for your help. Right. Your Look at this. Look at this mess. Look at this. Jeez. I can't believe this. Wow. No. Well, we got everything in, uh, and I'm not happy. Um, well, everything works, except, and I'm going to go ahead and keep these, and I'm going to tell you why, because those light bulbs that I replaced cost $13 for two of them. We did fix that. All the back lights are working. Um, this is a mess. Whoever wired that up should be banned from wiring at all. If you go back into the other video, you'll see where he used house wire for the lighting on the truck. So when I was at the junkyard, I went ahead and pulled a wire harness out of a 74, 73 or 74 Chevy truck. And this is the wire harness right here that I pulled out. So maybe what I'll do is I will inspect the wire harness because this is like three hundred dollars for this, three or four hundred bucks. And uh, maybe I'll inspect the wire harness and see what's going on with it. But I don't even know if I want to use this. We don't know. We'll think about it. Um, we're working on the Chevy truck, the '74. We're getting it done. Like I said, everything's going to be brand new except the paint job on it, basically. Um, up here in this box over here, I actually got other parts for the interior. I do have a new headlight switch. Now that has to do with the electrical, and I'm going to replace that. I also put uh, uh, got a brand new wiper switch. Now the dimmer switch was on back order. We don't know when we're going to get that. But uh, I actually got all the parts for the doors coming. And that'll be the next thing that we're going to do. So I got to gut all the doors out. I got to clean all the tracks up and get them working. I've got to replace all this. We're probably going to keep the door panels, the original door panels. I'm going to get a brand new dash pad for it. Uh, we'll probably replace all that over there, that trim. I already have a brand new dash uh, thing here and I also have a brand new lens for the gauges and I don't know if I showed you or not but I did go ahead and finally get the tilt steering in what a nightmare that was and watch this did you see that did you see how nice and beautiful that door closes awesome so the tail light harness that I installed uh, did fix a lot of the issues so if you look the front end it's done we got the brand new refinished chrome on the truck. Came out beautiful. Uh, restored grill. Love it. 454, of course. 
I went ahead and polished the bumper out. I got all the rust. There was, there was rust all on this, guys. Surface rust. Surface rust all over the top of the moment. That green magic took that all off. And then, of course, we painted the top of the radiator support. You can see how that looks. That looks really nice. Um, I did order a wire harness, like I said. The wire harness won't be here for four to six weeks, so we're gonna completely rewire all this and get rid of all this Jerry rig operation. Or we can say Larry rig today. Sorry if your name's Jerry, I didn't mean that. Uh, that's just a, uh, a suggestion that says it's rigged. We'll see you later, take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. Building a driver and not a show queen, not a boat queen, not a uh, garage king, and definitely not a beautiful brand new car restored that is now turning into a storage unit. Look at this. I got this hood leaning up against my car. Put that right there. And then we're using the tail fin as a shelf. So yeah, really, really a piece of work here, guys. I wish I would have never painted it. Before I painted this car, I'm gonna let you know, let me get the green magic out. Beautiful stuff. Before I let you go, um, I uh, used to drive this car three or four times a week. Now that it's painted, that's what it sits doing right there. That's it. It just sits there and looks like that. We will not be parking my truck inside the garage. The truck will be an outside park truck. Definitely. Take it easy.